today we'll be talking about the basics in orthopedic oncology as you can see here that this is a rather vast topics and I would like to divide this con this topic into three parts and we'll start today with part one please follow my channel and you'll find the part two and part three video over at the playlist now let's go to the first part when discussing about the basics in tumor we need to start with the patient evaluation when we evaluate a patient with an suspect, suspected oncologic condition there are various evaluation additional evaluation that could be performed to those patients which include radiological or laboratory evaluation please be reminded that in these mind maps i do not add all sorts of radiology evaluation that is available out there or all sorts of laboratory evaluation that is available i will just point out the most important ones that needs to be known for an orthopedic surgeon let us start with radiology as you can see here that in this era radiology plays a very important role in orthopedic oncology mainly because its ability to identify the extension of the lesion the extension of any skip lesions and also the ability to identify how much or where or the size of the lesion itself and these are all the functions of the MRI but one particular function of an MRI in an orthopedic case is its ability to identify the extension of the soft tissue which in this particular case is the encasement of the neurovascular structure this is very important to notice because if the soft tissue extension of the tumor has reached the neurovascular structures the limb is usually not salvageable the next radiological examination that is also important that needs to be learned is the nuclear medicine examination which is also known as bone scanning well in bone scanning we usually use various types of agents these radioactive agents may perform different functions and these agents may also have different affinities according to the type that is used the most frequently used or the most commonly used ones are the technetium 99m phosphate complexes and it is usually absorbed onto the hydroxyapatite crystals in our bone and it is usually deposited in areas of infection trauma or neoplasia usually it could consist of three or even four phase the first phase would be the flow phase which is usually used to demonstrate perfusion to a certain lesion so after the patient is, is prepped in the radiological room and being given the specific radioactive material injection the first imaging is take within minutes to have a flow phase imaging and the second one would be the blood pool which the imaging is taken within five minutes of the injection and in inflamed areas the capillaries are usually dilated and the blood will pool over at those certain locations and where the blood pools the contrast also pools and radioactive signals will increase and it will be caught by the specialized camera and next would be the bone phase usually in this phase the patient is evaluated for its osteoblastic activity and usually it demonstrates the relative turnover of the bone which in which case the image is taken around three hours after injection the next radioactive material that could be used is the gallium or the gallium 67 citrate scan usually it is localized in sites of inflammation and neoplasia and it required delayed 
imaging of around 24 to 48 hours and it is also less dependent on vascular flow than that is the technetium. The third one that is most commonly used is the indium scan. For the indium 111 scan, the white blood cells are labeled and it usually is collected in areas of inflammation instead of neoplasia. So this scan is more informative for us to let us know that this lesion is not a neoplasia. Other scans that have employed the principles of bone scanning include DVT or even the SPECT scan that is available in certain medical centers. And for the laboratory itself, there are once again a lot of laboratory methods that is now being employed to help us identify the various subtypes of orthopedic tumors. But one of these, one of the most common one used is the ALP and the LDH. ALP stands for alkaline phosphatase and LDH stands for lactate dehydrogenase. Now for the ALP itself, it is actually a family of metalloenzymes and it represents the osteoblastic activity. As we can see, and we have maybe some of you have read about it, that osteoblasts are a source of certain types of tumor. And the ALP itself is mostly derived from bone, but some hepatic tissues or kidney can also produce these enzymes. So for the ALP itself, because it represents the activity of the osteoblast, the increased serum level of ALP in orthopedic tumors usually correlates with poorer prognosis, while the increase of serum ALP also correlates with greater ratio of presence of metastasis at diagnosis. And this is frequently used in the evaluation of certain tumors such as osteosarcoma. For the LDH itself, it is a form of tetrameric enzyme and usually it reflects the tumor burden. LDH is frequently used as a prognostic factor in various tumor. Although in orthopedic department, it is only sometimes used to evaluate cases of osteosarcoma or Ewing sarcoma in other departments such as the lung, prostate or pancreatic, this LDH is very useful to help us determine the prognosis of the patient. And now that we have known about the two most common used radiology and laboratory findings, we shall discuss a little bit more regarding the biopsy. As for the biopsy itself, the biopsy usually can be divided into a open biopsy or closed biopsy, depending on the condition of the patient's skin. For the closed biopsy, we only use needles. The needles could be a fine needle in which we obtain liquid samples or we could also obtain some tissue samples using a core needle biopsy. For the fine needle aspiration, usually the samples acquired can only be examined using histological methods as we can only see some scattered cells. And for the core needle biopsy, because the needle used is a large bore needle, we can obtain a rather good sample that allows us to identify the types of the tissue, the structures of the tissue, and even the borders of the tumor cells. For the biopsy, in an open way, there are various types of techniques and various complications but that can occur. But first, we should know the 10 rules for a successful biopsy. The rules of the biopsy are actually very simple and we could remember these rules by pretending that we are the operator and we are the ones doing the surgery. So the very first rule is definitely do not hurry in doing any types of procedure. And 
we should never contaminate any nerves, vessels, or joints, and we do not operate without any adequate preoperative imaging because a preoperative imaging can help us determine the location of the biopsy and which samples are to be taken. Next would be to send the biopsy specimen to a bone or soft tissue pathologist, preferably if, if possible, you should contact the pathologist yourself and explain the patient's condition to help them better determine the type of the tumor. Next is always take the shortest way through one compartment only without contaminating other compartments. Plan your biopsy according to the later resections that may be performed and also you need to gain enough and representative tissue operate as atraumatically as possible, avoid any post-operative hematoma by all possible means, and insert a drain and lead it out through your biopsy tract. I will show you some pictures that help determine how to do a proper biopsy and how do you make a good incision. For the types of biopsy, it could be an incisional or excisional type of biopsy. As we have seen here, that biopsy frequently is associated with various complications such as iatrogenic, injury to the vessels or the nerves, complications of the wound healing, wound infection, tumor cell contamination along the biopsy tract, subsequent local recurrence, and also higher cost. And these biopsy are usually taken with several points taken in mind. The first one would be the planned incision. The incision should always be a small incision, longitudinal, along the planes of the tissue and not a transverse biopsy such as the one depicted here because all biopsy tracts must be incised at a later definitive surgery and if you plan to do a transverse incision for a biopsy then the later definitive surgery would in would be more difficult as you need a larger incision to close this defect and it will also contaminate several compartments the next one this one, this picture shows us the same principle. This is a yes and this is a no. Definitely do not do a transverse incision in the limb. Next would be performing the planes where you are going to enter the tumor. As you can see here that these are the important vascular structures. This brown area is the tumor and it is advised that you do, you take the shortest incision possible to enter the tumor. As depicted here in this transverse incision, this is the tumor and it is best that you enter through the deltoid area because if you enter through this area, you will contaminate other compartments and also invade the vascular structures which will cause tumor seeding along the biopsy tract and any limb salvage that is planned may be not may be unapplicable in future surgeries. The next thing that needs to be paid close attention to is the location of your incision. As mentioned before that the shortest path must be chosen and the least compartment in contaminated contaminated will be best. So for a medial lesion, the biopsy tract should go through the medial area so to preserve the other compartments around the thigh. Same thing as a lateral lesion. The biopsy tract should enter through a laterally placed incision to avoid any contamination along the other femoral compartments. And next would be the method of bone window because sometimes a bone tumor is situated inside a bone and you need a window open up in the bone to create 
a window that provides access to the medullary contents of the bone. So the types of window that is advised is an oblong cortical window that has rounded ends. These may decrease the stress rises along the bone, which may induce a pathological fracture, such as the ones made here. The window is a, in a rectangle shape with a sharp corner, and this is not advised. The last would be the placement of the drain. As we can see here that drain should be passed along the tract of the biopsy. So if you have performed a biopsy, a longitudinal incision such as the ones depicted here, then B would be a desirable exit site for a drain. If you place it on the C area here, then it will be too far away and if you place it in a A area here, then you would widen the area of the biopsy, therefore contaminating other compartments and therefore making wound closure even more difficult. Okay, and that would be all for today's video. Be sure to look at other basic tumor videos which is in the playlist oncological playlist there you will find more explanation regarding the classification of the tumor the spreading of the tumor and also the basic principles in management of orthopedic tumor once again thank you for watching do not forget to like and subscribe the orthopedic tutor channel see you next time